the next phase of Space Invaders deals with a lot of little bit um, of game management stuff that kind of happens behind the scenes. This includes uh, resetting the level when the player gets hit by an enemy bullet. The lives and scores of the player. And also the game end state. So what happens when we um, destroy all the aliens? Or what happens when, as you can see in this scene, um, that when the enemies basically the next step down hit the domes and really they invade the planet and the game is over. So with this uh, game controller, let's go ahead and tackle just one thing at a time. The first thing on my list was resetting the game. So what does a resetting game entitle? Well, it entitles that we need to stop the game. And it also entails that we need to um, move both the player and the wave back to their start position. So to do that, we need a couple things. First, or a couple variables. The first variable is a new type of variable, and it's going to be a static variable, but the data type is bool, or short for boolean. And we're going to call it stop game, and that is equal to false. Now, the name of the variable entitles just that. If stop game is set to true, then of course the game will stop. And we'll look at coding that here in a bit. <clears throat> but the new thing also here is static. So static means that I can actually access it outside of this script from any other script without doing what's called a reference or connection, kind of like we use that git component when we said git component rigid body 2D on the ball. Um, instead, we don't need that and we can just use the static. Also, again, the bool or short for boolean is our variable data type that is either true or false. If it's true, yes, on, one, or if it's false, it's off, zero. It's basically what bool is if you don't remember. So we need that. We also then need another data type that's kind of new, which is the transform data type. And we're going to make one for the player, and we're going to make one for the enemy wave. Now this transform component is basically accessing this right here, this transform, on any kind of game object that we are going to connect to this variable inside of Unity. And what this transformer component allows us to do is easier access to position, rotation, and the scale parts of the transform. Could we do a game object like we did with like the bullet and such? Yes, but we'd have to use that dot modifier. So I'd have to say this game object dot transform dot position and then play with the position. Or in my case with transform, I can just say this variable dot position. So I can access the position or the rotation or the scale more directly than using the game object. And that's why I'm using transform. The next step that we want to do is I'm going to make um, a couple variables that are private of type vector three. And they are going to be player start POS and also one for wave start POS. And basically what these variables are going to be is they're going to hold the X, Y, and Z location of our player, of our wave, in which the start location of the player is, in which to move it back to the start when the player gets hit by an enemy bullet. So we need the, this data to be activated or looked up on start, or the start of the level, so of course we go to our void start method. And in here, all we need to do is say player start POS is equal to the player dot position. And we can do the same thing for the enemy wave. So before the wave, before the player even moves, the start command happens. Instead of hard coding the, the values, you just we just save them at the start and go again. So when this happens, we can then um, be ready to reset 
the player in the wave. Now, where do I do that? How do I do that? Well, I'm going to make a void method called reset. And with that void method, I can then inside there, what are we going to do? Well, reset is going to stop the game. So set that equal to true because we want to stop everything. Then the player dot position will be equal to the player start position. The wave dot position will be equal to the wave start POS. And then we basically need to start the game again. So what does that entail? Well, let's, uh, we do not want to start, say, the level right away all over again, start it up. Instead, let's kind of wait or give it a pause. So how do we do that? Well, let's use the invoke command. So we're going to say invoke. We're going to make a new method, and that method is going to be start game. And we're going to start after, we'll say, two seconds again. And so what then that allows us to do is to come here and say void start game. And really, to just start the game, what's going to happen is we just need to say stop game is equal to false. So basically turning that off, we're going to look at a bunch of the other coding or the other scripting. And we will... Um, do some scripting in there that allows us to, when stop game turns off, um, everything gets unpaused and we can control everything. But for now, we're just gonna say start games, which um, after two seconds, it'll say stop game equals false. So this is our script. We're gonna have the reset. We're gonna be able to call reset. And then we're going to um, be able to stop the game and start the game. So, Question is, how do we get all this to work together? Well, make sure you save the code, go over to Unity, and make sure you don't have any errors, and then find your game controller, and let's attach the Invaders controller script. Now, as you can see, if everything works correctly, your Invaders controller script is looking for a reference to the player and a reference to the wave. I can simply drag out the gunship to connect it and the enemy wave to connect that. Notice that there's this little, it's this little green, uh, blue and red line, little triangle looking thing. That is to reference that, look, here's the same symbol for a transform component. Now, right now, if I play, nothing's going to happen, right? The game doesn't really even get stopped. So we need to be able to call the invader's uh, control script when the player is hit. So we could do it in one of two areas. I could do it on the gunship, but, and really either way, doesn't really matter. But in my case, since the enemy bullet script is already um, calling the player right here, and we did this earlier where we are going to reset this would be the easier way to do it. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a search command and search for the game controller. Now, the cool thing with Unity, again, I named mine game controller, but in these tags, just like um, the tag for the player, we also have the tag for the game controller. So if you select that as a tag, we can now search or find an object with the tag game controller. So to find a game object in our scene, we call the find command. So I need to call the game object class and say dot, and then I'm going to call a method that's on it. In our case, it, there is there's also there's a find command where I can enter in here in quoted text what I'm going to find for. Or in my case, I'm not going to just say find because that actually finds using names. But in my case, I'm going to say find with tag. And since I know I tagged it with game controller, um, I know 
that that is the object it's going to find. Again, my game controller is named the same, so yes, it would find it, but in my case, I'm just finding it. And then I'm going to call the command get component because I need to access a component. In my component, I put in my uh, triangle, my less than greater than signs, and that component that I'm going to try to access is right up here if you have it open, but it's the whatever you call your um, script. So mine was invaders controller. And then add parentheses. Okay, the invaders controller dot cs script is right up here. That's what the name of my script. Now, if your script is named something else like just controller or whatever, whatever component you're trying to access, you have to put it in here. Just like we did with the ball. See how the ball right here we said get component rigid body 2D. That's the name of the component we're trying to access. So that is the name of the component we're trying to access here. It just happens to be a code script. Always got to have these parentheses on the end like this. And then we have to say dot. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to access this reset method. So I'm going to call reset parentheses. And what that will do is that will should, on my space invaders, call it. Now, did this intentionally. You're going to get this error. It says invaders controller dot reset is inaccessible due to its protection level. So let's talk about protection level. Well, Protection level is this, public, private. Also goes into the pub, into the protection level is the static command, okay? If it's public, that means I can access it outside of this code. If it's private, not only is it hidden in Unity, but it's also hidden outside and I cannot access this variable from other scripts as I could maybe this transform in this wave, uh, player and wave. So in here, that's the same thing with these methods, okay? Methods by default, if you don't put public or private, they're just gonna um, be here, okay? So I need to add a word public because the protection level is default to private, you cannot access it. So go back to your invader script and add the word public. Now on reset here, or in my in Unity, that error should go away. So I've hit the player with a bullet, everything, should work. Let's see what happens. See if the player can get hit with a bullet here. We'll see what happens. Getting close. There we go. As you can see, for a split second, the level popped up. 